So we go up to the start of the first Attention. race after tea. It's the Thames Challenge Cup. Go. We've got City of Oxford on Get the ready, left please. of the picture there against the Commercial Rowing Club from yes. Ireland. And we see the Cox there with her hand up and just waiting these nervous moments before the start. The umpire will be in position. The blades look square. Water looks beautiful up there on the start. And we're all set to go. Attention. Go. Yeah, as you said, the break, sometimes you get a bit of bounce down there, don't you? But actually, that looks really still, doesn't it? And you can really hear the noise of the blades and the oars as they crash off the starts there. It's an explosion of power in an eights race, isn't it? Like you say, you've got the silence, the calm before the storm. The calm here in the back of the island where the water's just beautiful and flat. And, uh, and then the umpire drops the flag. And City of Oxford, we hit, see here, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this crew from commercial. That was it on the on the other side there. So the the crew in the sort of the white uh, racing suits there, commercial island, just on the near side of the screen there. Nice, clean, tidy start from them. Yeah, they got away well. I think they're, they're, to me they're like a bit of form crew in this event. They last won the Thames Cup back in 1996, but this is a, a classy looking outfit. Um, and uh, I got to commentate on them yesterday. A good, strong win yesterday, and uh, they're looking to try and dominate this one. Yeah, it's a strong start already, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So coming up towards these, these marks out of the island, coming up towards the quarter mile, we've got to think of the blade work. Looks pretty tidy to me, moving pretty nicely as we see the crew, those hands just coming around and up, locking the blades in the water. And then there's a, a reasonable amount of kind of poise as they're pushing the boat and it just looks locked solid in the water. And they're just easing away. Probably got clear water now on the city of Oxford on the left of the picture. Just look like they're not quite covering the blades as quickly. Yeah, as you say, yeah, the crew on the right-hand side there, that, the, the Irish crew, the commercial uh, commercial rowing club crew, just a little bit tidy, a little bit quicker on it, aren't they? There, a bit, bit, a bit more, um, uh, you know, a bit, bit more direct, really, um, and hence you can see them sort of just pulling away a little bit more comfortably from the uh, City of Oxford crew on the on the left-hand side of the screen. Yeah, so the crew from Commercial Rowing Club in Ireland, they were winners of the Senior Eights of the Irish Championships in 2018. We have another look at their blade work. And I guess, yeah, we're seeing just nice movement together. Great composure there from the strokeman. So the guy on the right-hand side of the screen, just in front of the, front of the cox, you know, he's just looking down the course, taking deep, deep, big, strong breaths and setting a really nice rhythm to follow there. Yeah, Colin Dowling in the stroke seat there. There's just a fairly impassive look on his face. Not really moving around, not looking at the opposition, just focusing or just looking behind the boat and all the rest of the crew really quite composed in terms of that eye line and just how well they're moving in sync with that boat really and they're just able to give it plenty of power and it looks really solid and locked up through the drive and pretty calm on the way back it does doesn't it and you can see that nice blue stripe or you could on that boat there and actually that that line there was nice and trim it wasn't jumping around like sometimes you can get in boats where where you're not quite connecting with the rhythm of the boat yeah, we're looking at the, uh, the commercial crew from Ireland. They've got the body weights here, around sort of an average of about 82 kilograms. Um, so reasonably big men, but like you say, when all that weight comes rolling into the stern, you want to keep the stern up. You don't want to see that blue line disappearing under the water, that stern being kicked backwards. Just want them to relax, let it come to them, and then pick up the next stroke. That's it, isn't it? It's a bit like a giant seesaw. Like You don't all want to run down one end of the boat and sort of dip it under really you just want to try and keep it running flat i think it's a really good point adam i think a lot of people when they talk about making the boat run they think about balance sort of side to side mm. without actually thinking about end to end yeah. and how all that weight goes into the stern effectively you then show more of the bottom of the boat to the river and you don't want to do that you want to keep it as flat as possible you can see that quite nicely on this shot here actually because you can you're almost on top of the crew here and you can just see that stern end so that's sort of the the end behind the cox and it's just moving very sweetly, isn't it? And and consequently, they're sort of, you know, they've got a good a good lead here. So sort of coming halfway down the course. As you say, the uh, the blue line on that white Felipe boat um, gives a really nice guide. And we're going to have a look really up nice and close, and just see inside the boat those aluminium riggers that we see everyone using these days. One piece rather than the either aluminium or carbon, I guess. But it's a, it's a what do you call it? A two-stay rigger. Oh, what these uh, these wing these wing riggers with the backside on? Yeah, I guess you could, couldn't you? Yeah, they're two fixed points. But I mean, this, yeah, they look at them now. They've got a, a really good margin here. This, uh, you know, this Irish crew, they're sort of national championships from the senior eights this year, aren't they? As well, so we'd expect good things from them. The City of Oxford crew just creeping into shot there on the far left now. Um, I mean, I'm catching up with some of their supporters earlier. Here they are, City of Oxford, giving it their all now. These guys, uh, you know, their, their supporters work 
ecstatic to see them really racing on the Thursday, to be honest. They're often often uh, dubbed as uh, Wednesday Warriors. So, you know, they get get a race in and, and that's normally them. So so to have two races at Henley is, is, um, is brilliant for them. Well, they had a real tough race yesterday, yesterday against London Roman Club A, um, and they had to really tough it out. They were behind at Forley, they were behind from the barrier, um, but they managed to come back through and, uh, and row through and win that one. But um, tougher racing today. And they won't be known as Wednesday Warriors. No, they've, they've, they've shaken that, uh, that curse, haven't they? Brilliant. So we get this nice view from above. And again, just looking at another different way of looking at the crew and those laid angles. Yeah, really nice symmetry, isn't it? It's nice when that sort of that slightly wider shot. You just got a sense of how all those blades were perfectly parallel, and how you know how sort of in tune everyone is with that rhythm and ability to sort of do do the some do something the same. All, all eight people doing the same thing is quite quite remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the idea of creating a really nice um, a really nice arc, kind of through the uh, through the stroke, reaching out long, lock the blade in the water, move the boat past it as far towards the finish line as you can. It's a, it's a sort of nice sort of symmetry of mathematics going on, isn't it? That sort of 90 degree arc that you can see when you look on top of the boats. Well, you're going to invite me to be really boring now and talk about <laughs> how we used to roll forwards and try and reach around 57 degrees, oh, really? come yeah. through the middle yeah. point and press it out 36 degrees behind the pin. Right. That's and precision, Greg. That, yeah. for me, was the idea of a really good arc. I hope you um, had your protractor out for that. Well, the coach did right. when we attached those straws to the side of the boat that you sometimes see. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can mark it out. And you know you come forwards right out there, reach it out as far towards the finish line as you can, lift the handle, drop the spoon in, 57 degrees forwards, maximum effort through the 90, through the centre point, hold it 36 degrees behind, off you go. Perfect, yeah. I mean, telemetry's moved on now, isn't it? You get all that sort of display... Uh, live in most of these crews now, but here they come to the line. That's it, coming down towards the line, moving smoothly together, getting all their angles right. Commercial rowing club crossing nicely ahead of the City of Oxford rowing club, who we see come down to the line now. They hear the beat, they can relax, they hold their heads high as we see confirmation of that win in the Thames Cup for commercial over the City of Oxford.